supplements. Today I want to talk to you about vitamin D. Now, the funny thing is of all these research articles coming out, vitamin D helps with this, vitamin D helps with that. You know, you can get vitamin D from fortified milk. Um, you know, people are, are given vitamin D because they're diagnosed with celiac. Babies are being born, put them on vitamin D. My toe is falling off, take vitamin D. My shoulder is dislocated, take vitamin D. Um, you have osteoporosis, take vitamin D. Your immune system's weak, you know, a weakened, take you vitamin D. This. How have we survived so many years without vitamin D or having these deficiencies in vitamin D or maybe getting enough vitamin D? They're, they're touting vitamin D as almost like the end-all, be-all cure to everything in this it's world. It's not going to work. There's too many stressors in our environment. There's too much mercury in people's mouth. There's too many toxins in our water. The dead crap food that people are eating. I mean, it's creating too many, all these external stressors are creating way too many internal So we have all these internal stressors that no one's focusing on. We look at the symptoms nowadays. We get this all the time from people calling, how do I treat my H. pylori? How do I treat my fungus? Oh, I have adrenal fatigue. My lab says adrenal fatigue. And my supplement's not working. And I have to be honest with you, it's actually super, super irritating teaching all over the world and having practitioners just not understand that you need a foundation for this stuff to work. You cannot treat a lab result. Doctors do the same exact thing, so even though you're using bioidentical hormones, you're doing the same thing they do, you're just using a healthier supplement. What is causing the lab result, whether it's H. pylori, adrenal fatigue? What are the internal stressors in their life? What are the external stressors? You need to get to the bottom of it. And this comes down to doctors telling you, oh, you need vitamin D, because if you don't, you're going to die. Your immune system is going to be weak. You're going to get what osteoporosis. What's causing the deficiency in vitamin D? So I'm going to throw this out there. There's a couple reasons why I think maybe we might have all these deficiencies in vitamin D. I'm not sure why they're focusing on vitamin D so much. Um, you know, we can go into conspiracy theory and say, you know, they want to make a bunch of money and who knows, you know, maybe next month it'll be vitamin K and after that it'll be vitamin A on and on. But I'm not sure why, but we have to look at why there are deficiencies in vitamin D. Why are these ha things happening? What is causing them? Not focus on the effect, which is the deficiency. What's causing them? Well, you know, we have all these overweight doctors on YouTube talking about it. We have all these skinny, lethargic-looking, you know, gray doctors talking about it. But it could be the lack of sun. Our body takes the sun rays. When it hits our skin, it actually, you know, through a, you know, certain processes, we actually start producing vitamin D. Well, we have to look at our children nowadays. No one's getting outside. Our adults are sitting on the computer in coffee shops. No one goes outside anymore to enjoy the environment. Kids come home, they're not playing outside, they're not playing on the big wheels, they're not playing hide-go-seek, they're not playing sports. They're sitting in front of the computer, playing the Wii, talking on their phone, sitting in coffee shops, and adults are doing the exact same thing. So we have to look at, maybe it's actually more an environmental thing. Maybe our, our population is not getting outside enough. So that could be the first reason why we're seeing these deficiencies. So my first recommendation is get outside. What do you do? You wake up. You eat breakfast, you go to work for 8 to 10 hours, then you go home or you go to the gym, and when, you, when are you really outside getting some sun? Try to give yourself 1 to 3 hours a day outside. I know it sounds like a lot, but you're doing everything for everyone else. Start focusing on yourself and you might enjoy life. So that's my first recommendation in regards to you know vitamin D deficiencies. Two, it could actually be our food quality. Our food quality is so poor, and there's tons of research to show that organic versus conventional soil, the our organic soil is a full of minerals, they're full of living organisms, while conventional is full of nothing. It's void of nutrients. It's actually in the negative. Same thing with our plant life, vegetables, on and on and on. Organic has tons of minerals, 100 more, sometimes 120 more percent of vitamin C, all these different minerals, vitamin D, iron, on and on and on, where our conventional is actually void, negative 17, 20, 25 percent of all these different nutrients. And all you're really getting is water, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and any other eye that you can think of, right? So... We have to look at our food quality, or we can look at um, other foods that we're eating. We're not maybe not breaking them down. Um, we're, a lot of people just eating dead foods, fruit roll-ups, pop tarts, donuts, you know, pastas. These things don't grow in our in our environment. They're industrialized. So we have to look at beside the sun and getting outside. We have to look at possible food quality. Third, which I think is you know the other two are definitely up there. I think this is you know the the. Um, I would say maybe number one, and I'd like to raise this concern to doctors. Well, we eat good food. This is if we're eating good foods. Most people are eating foods that are void of nutrients, so that's why they might be vitamin A, D, K, E deficient. 
They might have a calcium deficiency. I mean, you have all these people taking calcium. Well, you need adequate amounts of hydrochloric acid in your stomach to actually absorb in the small intestine calcium. You actually need good levels of embuterate in the large intestine to actually produce calcium, absorb calcium, and vitamin K, and folic acid, and B12. So is it the foods or is it a physiological problem? It's both, but it differs per person. So the interesting thing about vitamin D when we're talking about it, it could be sun, it could be food quality. So think about that. This is huge. Now, don't think just because you eat healthy foods, you're going to have optimum amounts of vitamin D in your body. You might have an internal imbalance. It could be something in the stomach like decreased hydrochloric acid. It could be a pancreatic insufficiencies. The pancreas releases enzymes to break down proteins, carbs, and fats. It could be an issue in the small intestine. It could be... Um, uh, malabsorption issues, hyperpermeability issues, uh, a dysbiosis issue between good and bad bacteria. The lacteals that are on your villa that break down fats could actually be, you know, um, atrophied secondary to a gluten intolerance. You could have issues in the large intestine um, secondary to putrefying carbohydrates, on and on and on. But the most interesting thing is in the gallbladder, you can have different types of gallbladder deficiencies. You can have what's called a biliary insufficiency. You can have what's called a biliary, biliary stasis, and you can have biliary obstruction. I want to talk more about biliary stasis. Now, a lot of times people have biliary stasis from having biliary insufficiency. Biliary insufficiency is the inability of the liver cells to produce adequate amounts of bile. Now, how does that happen? Well, it could be diseases. Um, it could be you know cirrhosis. But the most common is a diet that is high in... Um, free radicals, or a diet that causes high amounts of free radicals from you know crappy foods, excess refined foods, lots of sugars, chemicals, additives, preservatives, but a diet that's high in hydrogenated trans fatty acids and low in fats or good quality fats of any kind, monounsaturated, saturated, polyunsaturated. So that's what usually what causes a bili causes a biliary ins insufficiency. Well, from that over time, you can develop what's called biliary stasis. What does that mean? It's a condition of thickening of the bile. How does this happen? course, I'm going to get my notes. This usually happens um, secondary to increases in cholesterol secretion, could be from diet. It happens secondary to a decrease in bile acid formation from dietary restrictions or overeating certain foods or undereating certain foods. And it could be from decrease decreases in phosphatidylcholine secretion. And that's just, you know, a little bit above and beyond. But the bottom line, if this is left unchecked, then it can lead to biliary obstruction like gallstones. Well, let's focus on biliary stasis. If you're not producing enough bile from diet, if you're not releasing enough bile from diet, if you have super saturation or thickening of this bile from improper eating and improper living, from a hydrochloric acid deficiency, from a pancreatic deficiency, from malabsorption, not breaking down your foods, on and on and on, from all these external stressors, whether it's thoughts, you know, poor sleep, eat, drinking, you know, drinks that are, have tons of caffeine and sugar, you name it. A stress is a stress. What happens is. In, with biliary stasis, you can develop an accumulation of toxins in the, in the hepatobiliary system, like liver gallbladder. You can get rancidif rancidification of fats in that system, which is they just sit there and, and rancidify. You can develop essential fatty acid deficiencies, and you see this a lot in people, and people just pump in cod liver oil into their body. And cod liver oil is, is probably one of the best places where you can get vitamin A and D instead of just taking vitamin D. So if you have a biliary you know, in, um, biliary stasis and you're taking collar oil, well, you have to fix the stasis, otherwise you're just going to poop out the oil. You could develop, you know, gallstones, liver damage, but the most interesting thing is you can de basically develop um, insufficiencies in fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K. So if you have a biliary um, stasis issue from diet, from some of the things I just talked about, which it might be a little bit over your head, but the bottom line is it comes from external stressors. doesn't matter what type of stress, but you end up with a stress in the hepatobiliary system, liver and gallbladder. And it's usually from an issue in the stomach, whether it's a pathogen, parasite, or just low pH hydrochloric acid issues. Same thing with the stomach. So when you have this issue, the foods you're eating, you can't break down fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin E, D, E, and K. So what's the, what's the premise of this? The bottom line is if you have an issue with the liver gallbladder, it doesn't matter how much vitamin D you take, how much fat you take, you can't absorb it. So instead of taking all these foods, figure out why there's a deficiency there and why you can't break down these foods. Now, a lot of you guys are looking for answers. Well, the bottom line is it's individualized for every person. So if you want to learn more and get assessed, give us a call to set up your free consultation.